Welcome back, everybody. Another episode of Hoss Talks for you. Sitting next to me today, a lot of you aren't going to know this, but uh, and I had to actually ask, but it's Mark Lutz, a.k.a. The Candyman. The Candyman is on Hoss Talks. And, dude, thanks for taking time and, like, coming here early just for me. Hey, it's not a problem. <laughs> I get to track early, come out and visit with people, and then if somebody needs some help, I can help out a little bit or... Just go up and make sure my seat's ready. There you go. So I want to jump into things right <laughs> off the get-go is because um, I've known you since you you know, you know raced it here at Port, and then you were an infield worker, and then, um, a.k.a. the name, Candyman, you always have the uh, the candy, the little suckers and everything. But let's, like, <clears throat> rewind back, uh, let's just say, five or ten years to where you all got started. You got started about ten years ago, right? Well, I got started, <laughs> no, I got started in the mid-90s. Mid-90s is whenever you started racing mini stocks, right? Yes, I started racing mini stocks out at the Tulsa Speedway on 76th Street. Raced out there a year, and then I went up to South Coffeville. It was called Mid-America Raceway. Raced up there a year, and then I went to Salina High Banks and raced up there two or three years. So you just been dabbling all along. I mean, were you always interested in racing, or was it one of those deals where a buddy took you out to the racetrack for a couple of cold drinks, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm going to be a race car driver? No. My folks uh, used to go to the fairgrounds back in 57, started us going to the races there, and I've just loved them ever since. Right. So growing up, you go to the races and everything else. Um, judging by your cap, you're a, an army veteran. What what led you to do the, the the army thing instead of staying back and working like maybe some of your buddies did? I got drafted. You got drafted is how it all worked out. You didn't have yes. no choice. No, uh, I spent six years in the army. I was in artillery. Don't have no regrets. I spent a year in Vietnam. Uh, I was out for a while. Joined the Oklahoma Air National Guard, and I spent 19 years in it. Wow. Well, thanks. Pound it right there, man. Thank you. That's pretty cool. Thank you. I appreciate that. So you get, you get, you do the whole army thing, you come back. What was it that, like, what industry interested you in, like, the mini stocks? It was something affordable. And I had some friends that raced modifieds. I pitted for them for a while and seen mini stocks racing out at Creek County one time. And I said, that looked like fun. And they had a muffler shop and, they ended up having an old car sitting there, and they said, here, it's yours. Now you fix it. There you go. So have you always been, like, hands-on mechanical type of guy? or I tried, yeah. yeah. I always tried to, like, mix it up a little bit and figure things out after it's broke and everything? Yeah. So you run the mini stocks. You start at Tulsa. You go to South Coffeeville, Mid-America. <laughs> you go to Salina and these other places. What led you to port? Well, I was... I got into micros and, uh, in about 2000, and I was racing out at Will Rogers Raceway. And in 09, I, I was running turf cars. In 09, I won the championship out there. Well, they got rid of the turf tire, so they had sportsman class. And I raced out there. They only ran six races before they shut down. If I wanted to race, I had to come to port. Well, and, there you go. And if Port is a fabulous place to race. I mean, if you can race here decent, you can go anywhere and race. So you raced here. We were talking before we started recording. Five years you put in time here. Um, and through those five years, I mean, that was like the heyday of the sportsman class, really, where you had a bunch of guys. Um, competition was really stiff. Uh, did you ever run the shootout? Was that ever one of your deals? No, no. I never ran it because – for the pay and everything, to me, a low-budget racer, it wasn't worth it. Right. And now, the last three, four years, I've been working at the shootout, and I thought I always had an important job. That's where somebody may, they may recognize you there, too. You're the duct tape guy. That's it. How Now, now we got to talking uh, this year, because some of the duct tape is a little bit stickier and a little bit crazier than the other tape. How many rolls of duct tape do you think you go through? You, you keep... Fairly good count, right? 
37 rolls. 37 rolls of duct tape throughout the Tulsa shootout. And you're, you've gotten kind of smart because you wear gloves instead of doing it bare hand. Did you do it bare hand the first year and then realize that, oh, man, my, my fingers are kind of ate up? Yeah. Uh, I had good calluses here and here. And <laughs> so that lasted one year. And then I went wearing gloves. And if you look at my gloves now, they've got red duct tape on the finger. <laughs> That's great. We've been kind of back and forth and all over the place. Ultimately, the thing that I see out of you is that you're just a doggone race fan. And yes. You, you like racing. Um, we, again, we were talking before recording, and, and you and the guys get here early every week, and you walk around chit-chatting with folks, and you guys just kind of bench race a little bit and talk about your week before. But as you've been coming here throughout the years, what's what's one thing that you've seen change the most? Because the cars have changed quite a bit. Body styles may be looking a little bit different. Um, but what's one thing that you've seen kind of just get crazy over the last, let's say, five or ten years? Well, the technology has totally changed since I raced. I mean, the shocks have gotten a whole lot better. The engines are a whole lot better. Uh, and that's it. And out here, all the big changes Shane has made has just made this place a premier place to come and race. You've been able to go to different racetracks and do different things like that and see different races and classes of cars. What it is what is it about the micros that makes you want to come out to Port City and watch the micros? The competition. Here at Port City the competition is fabulous. You don't have one guy dominate. You've got a bunch of people that are just good. Right. And when there's good racing, I love to watch it. There you go. I mean, it's just, you can't beat good racing. You know, over the course of the, let's say, let's last five years, you know, you always had your names of, you know, your Frank Flood and your Chris Andrews and your Kevin Bear and things like that. As those guys have gotten older and now Kevin doesn't race as much, Chris is quote unquote retired, but he still hops in a midget every now and then or still dabbles around. Frank has kind of changed gears and, um, not necessarily like he's stepping back out of the car, but he's, you know, helping out younger kids and doing the development deal, and you see him kind of growing and expanding on things. Um, where where do you see, like, certain young drivers that are really stepping up in big ways now? Well, I'm seeing a lot of the uh, junior sprint drivers moving up to restrictors and stuff, and it seems like the more horsepower you give them, the better car control and everything they've got. And... There are some of these junior sprint or drivers that have moved up that are really doing great in a restrictor. Absolutely. It gets really exciting watching them kind of grow and progress through different things and uh, just the way they, they all get going. Um, you've, been, you've been around quite a while, and you've you know seen people come, and you've seen people go and move up through the ranks and everything else. For young people that are getting into the sport now, um, what, what kind of, like, advice or, like, things would you tell them about racing? Go out and have fun. I mean, if you have fun, you enjoy it. The nights go by quicker. Uh, if you ever get mad, then you can't drive a car. But if you always go out and just have fun, and that's what I tell all the younger drivers that I see coming up, and you just got to have fun. And that's what I did. And I'll put it to you this way. I told you earlier, I paid good money to go out there and have mud <laughs> thrown in my face, but it was fun. It was fun. That's what it's all about. And that's <clears throat> the thing that people kind of lose track of sometimes is we need to stop and look. You know, yeah, we have um, rocket high gas prices right now. People are out fighting wars in, in different countries and um, tire prices are going up and you can't get tires and this and that. And uh Really wish that people would kind of stop sometimes and just remember that for majority of people, this is a, this is a weekend hobby. Yes. This is something that we do for fun. You know, it's not make it or break it. No. And you always, if you enjoy it enough, you'll always be here. There's ways you can make it to be here. And that's the way I was. My wife put me on a budget, and if I wanted to eat lunch real good, well, I might not race that Saturday. <laughs> but... We always had money somewhere to where we could come out. Yeah. And like I say, I always had a ball racing and everything else. 
over the years, you've been able to see different races. What are some of your bucket list racetracks that you haven't been to yet? And what are some racetracks that you feel like people have to go check out this racetrack or that racetrack? Well, in micro racing, if they hadn't ever been to Port City, they need to come here. Uh, I've been to Knoxville. I've been to Peavely. Uh, I've been to Magnolia Speedway in Mississippi. I've been to the Daytona 500. But Port City, if you've never been here, they need to come. I mean, they put on a real good show, and it's some of the best racing. And like that old saying, if you can win here at Port, you can win anywhere. And, and by the way, this is not a paid advertisement. I'm not <laughs> twisting his arm and letting him in for free if he gives us a good word, because guess what? Veterans always get in free here at Port City Raceway. Um, Knoxville, I've never been to Knoxville. For somebody that's never been to Knoxville – how would you describe Knoxville? Pardon the way I say it, but it's one hell of a circus. Yeah? I mean, you get there, uh, you get your seats and stuff, but if you go to the track early, you go out and sit on a concrete wall they've got and just look up and down the street. There are T-shirt trailers, everything out there, and the streets are packed. I mean, there is people everywhere. And that was on my bucket list, and... I got to go with Aaron Lemons. We went up there and had a ball. Man, that's uh, that's one track that's like definitely on my bucket list right now is is Knoxville, um, whether it be for the Knoxville Nationals, the three sixty four ten, or if it, whatever it may be. I just want to go witness a race um, at Knoxville. Peevely is one of those tracks that's really exciting. I've been to Peevely and and gotten to film there and do different things there. Um, whenever I first pulled up on Peevely off the highway, it kind of had like a Creek County feel to it to me, just the way it was kind of laid out their press box and everything. And, um, and you get in there and that place race is so freaking sweet. It's just so amazing to see 410 sprint cars there. Oh, it is. And then the midget show. Yeah. That is pretty darn awesome right there. I mean, the midgets put on a good show, but the sprint cars put on a good show too. But here I am again. I'm a race nut. Yeah. And any kind of a car on a track, I love it. Gotta love it. Um, outside of racing, you're uh, you're involved in some other things too. What do you do outside of racing? Uh, right now I'm retired, but I volunteer two days a week at the – Chapter 44 DAV in Claremore. I try to help out there because they help me, so I in turn try to help other vets. Uh, and that's about it. How can people get involved in in, D, in the DAV? I mean, they can donate money. They can donate time for community service and things like that, right? Yes, uh, they can do that. And then I plan on trying to come out here to the track twice this year uh, we're going to raffle off a shotgun, and we sell hats and necklaces and stuff like that just so it, we can keep the doors open because we don't have anything helping us other than donations or fundraising. Right. We don't have a bar like VFW or American Legion. Right. We just go by donations and fundraising. And that just, uh, I mean, that opens the doors for so many veterans and so many folks that um, really need the help that we don't want them to be forgotten because they didn't forget about us and they've they've given their time and they've done a lot of things for for us that can never be repaid monetarily you know it's it's every little bit of help um, goes a long way and you can help your your local DAV just by getting on your Facebook just google it I mean yeah. you can find a chapter they're all over the United States yes. um, and every single one of them could use the the assistance and the help Yes, because, well, and like I say, we just do fundraisings. That's how we keep our doors open. And any of the vets out there, I don't care. You were in the military, come and visit. You never know. You might have some problems, and we can try to help you out with them. Yep. Sometimes all you need is just an open ear from a, from a brother. That's you know? it. So that's that's really, I like that. You know, it doesn't matter what you may have going on, or if you just want to chit chat, or if you just need somebody to talk to, uh, that's it. We've got, got our open door. We've got open door. We're open Tuesday and Thursday, nine to three. Come up and visit. Yeah, we can shoot the breeze as good as anybody. There you go. Hey, so something else you said, you know, in, in racing, your piece of advice was go have fun. 
go have fun and just do it and uh, and enjoy the time that you have um, there at the racetrack. In life, how would what would your life you know life advice be as we as we close out the show here? Well, <clears throat> my philosophy is now I'm 71, and if I can make one person smile, that's a pretty good day. <laughs> but if I can make somebody laugh, that's one hell of a day. Doug Gun, he just had a hell of a day. That's it. You I got, got you me, laughing. That's great, <clears throat> folks. The Candyman. Mark Lutz, right here on Hoss Talks. We thank you for tuning in. Remember, go out there, have fun, and try to make somebody smile. Amen.